Welcome back to part two of this RPG dialogue system. In this video, we're going to be creating our dialogue manager script and hooking a few things up and maybe even get uh, a little testing done at the end. Let's jump straight into it. Now we can get on to the good stuff. We can create our dialogue manager. So we'll open that up in Visual Studio. We can get rid of the start and update again, both system namespaces, but this time we want to make sure that we're using unityengine.ui and also the text mesh pro namespace. Now we'll add a couple of fields in just to start. We need a public text mesh pro UGUI for the speaker's name. Also, we need one for dialogue and we'll add one for a nav button text as well we'll add in an image this is where we need the unity engine ui and that will be the speaker's sprite and what else do we need do we need anything else for now speaker name dialogue speaker sprite and the nav button text okay we can deal with that for now now one of the one of the things that we want to make sure is we want to make sure that we can only ever have one dialogue manager active in a scene at any given time. So the way we can do this is we can add an awake method. And within the awake method, we can make sure one doesn't already exist. Now to make sure they don't already exist, we'll add a private static dialog manager and we'll just call that our instance and within the away we can check if the instance is equal to null now if we don't already have a dialog manager instance will be null so we can set instance to this and leave it at that but if instance is not equal to null that means we already have a dialog manager in existence so the new object that's just tried to create itself can be destroyed. Meaning we'll only ever have one at any given time. We also want to be able to call our dialogue manager from anywhere else within our game. So we can do this by making a start conversation method static. Like so, public static void start conversation and we'll pass in one of our conversations. Now we're going to need to keep hold of a local copy of the conversation that we're passing in. So we'll just create a private conversation, current conversation, and then within start we will make instance dot current conversation equal to a uh, convo that we've passed in. Now, do a little bit of housekeeping before we start the conversation. Just in case we've already run this before and we've still got any data left in there, we can make sure that instance.speakername.text is empty. Instance.dialog.text is equal to empty. And we want to make sure that for the first time, uh, instance dot nav button text dot text is equal to the greater than symbol to denote we have another message within the conversation. Right, so we are all cleared out there. Now we can start by reading our first line. So to do that, we'll create a public void read next. Ah, what we are missing is we need to keep track of the current index of the dialogue line within our conversation. So, as you'd expect at the start of a conversation, we need instance dot current index to be set to zero. 
and we will start by reading the next line which from the start method will be uh, first okay so now how do we read the data that we've just passed in well we've passed in our conversation we've stored that locally our conversation stores an array of dialogue lines and our dialogue lines uh, individual speakers and strings of speech so we'll reference our current conversation dot get line by index which we added before and we can pass in our current index so this time it'll bring back uh, zero index our first line we can access the speaker dot get name that'll bring us a uh, line one speaker's name and we can set speaker name dot text equal to that now we just need to repeat this for the dialog dot text equals current convo dot get line by index current index dot dialogue and also uh, speaker sprite dot sprite is equal to again current convo dot get line by index current index dot speaker dot get sprite there we go so now that should populate our, our UI elements with uh, what we've got populated in our conversation and dialogues and then after we've read the line we want to make sure that next time we perform read next we're going to get the next index so we'll just increment current index by one now this is the very basics of it we can test this out now if we jump back over into unity we can just create a tester C sharp script just insert one public method called start convo and we will do dialogue manager dot start conversation and we need to pass in a conversation so in the inspector we'll assign a conversation for testing purposes and start conversation we'll create just a simple button to run our test start we'll assign the tester tester script to the button hook it up and make sure that when we run the on click event ie when we press the start button run start conversation okay so before we run the test we now need to create some speakers and some conversations so let's do that now let's create a little folder structure called speakers and another one called conversations we'll start with the speakers so if we go right click create we can see our dialog folder from when we created the asset menu tags and in here we can see we've got our new speaker and our new conversation now this is where using scriptable objects comes in really handy because now we can just click new speaker I'll name him after myself now we have a new speaker scriptable object and we can populate the speaker's name Mike and we'll choose a face Go on, I like him. We'll have him. So we'll throw that sprite into there. Quickly create one more speaker. I'll name it after my uh, fiance Sam. She's 
she'll be so happy. And which face should we give her? No, I can't give her that one. She wouldn't be happy with that. <laughs> That'll do. Face four. Okay, we drag face four into there as well. So now we have our two speakers. Now we'll make them speak by creating a new conversation. We'll do convo one and we'll make three lines. So each of these elements are uh, individual dialogue lines that we've set up. As you can see, it takes in a speaker and the dialogue itself. The text area attribute that we gave to the dialogue means that we have a little bit more space for each of our dialogue lines. So let me show you how easy it is to make a conversation. Drag myself in as the speaker and what should I say? Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to Comp3 Interactive. The next speaker, Sam. Uh, are you still doing that YouTube video? It's been three hours. <laughs> Sounds like something she'd say. And then just to cap it off, I don't, you can tell I don't really write stories. <laughs> yes, dear, I'm coming for tea. Okay, so now we have our two speakers and our conversation. All we need to do is in our test, um, our tester script, we can assign the conversation that we've just created. And now when we play the game, that should use all the data that we've created inside this conversation scriptable object and populate our dialogue box. Let's have a look. So we'll start. You know what we haven't done? What we haven't done is we haven't assigned a dialogue manager. So if we drag and drop a dialogue manager script into our dialogue box, we can then populate speaker name, dialogue, nav button text, and speaker sprite. Now when we run it and press the start button, bang, we get our first line of dialogue. Now currently, our next button doesn't do anything. So let's fix that. So if we jump over to our nav button, we can just move that over a little bit just to make it look a little bit nicer. We can assign the onClick event to run our read next method. So the way we do this, we will drag and drop our dialog box as a reference, access dialog manager, and then call read next. Now, whenever we press the next button, we'll hit read next. A dialogue manager instance will increment by one and we'll get our next line. And we can see that working now. Start our conversation. Hi, my name's Mike. Welcome to Comp3 Interactive. Next line. There's Sam. Next line. And you can see it's already working up until we try and go past a uh, Array bounds, as you can see, index out of a range exception. So to fix this, within our next line, before we actually do any of the populating, we want to make sure that our current index is not greater than our current convo dot get length. So this is where get length, the little bit of confusion in get length makes a little bit more sense. So now uh, we have three, three dialogue lines in our conversation, zero, one, and two as their index. When we're up to index two, we want to make sure that we know that this is our last one. To do that, while we do the check, if it is greater, 
we can just return and we don't need to do any of the populating. If it's not, then we'll go into it. So just by adding that, we can see that we won't get the index out of bounds exception. One, not zero, one, two, and now it doesn't do anything but we don't get the exception. So we can build on that a little bit. And that's where we'll leave it for today. Make sure you check out the third part of this video where we'll add the finishing touches to all our scripts and finally have a completely working dialogue system. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's comp3.interactive on both platforms. I've been Mike. I'll see you again soon.